हेलो एवरी ओन ओलकाम टू आवार चैनल टूडेज टपिक लाइन बै लाइन एक्सप्लेंेशन क्रिस्टोफर मालोस ट्रजेडी एडवर्ड द सेकेंड लाइन फिफ्टी फाइव टू सिक्सटी देर फोर आई उल हाव इटालियन मास्क बै नाइट सुइट स्पीचेस कमेडिज एंड प्लेजिंग शोज एंड इन द डे हुईन हि सेल वाक एब्रोड लाइक सिल्वर नीम्स माई पेज सेल वि क्लैड माई मैन लाइक सटर्स ग्रेजिंग ऑन द लॉन सेल उथ देयर गोट फिट डैंस द एंटिक है These lines have been extracted from Christopher Marlowe's tragedy Edward the Second, Act One, Scene One. Gaston, the French minion's feeling of joy at the prospect of his meeting with the king, who has recalled him, is here expressed. He expresses in these words his shrewd plan to entertain the king. Gaston is desirous of stirring and winning the heart of Edward. by providing him with quite fanciful and thrilling entertainments the king has a keen passion for plays and music and gaveston proposes to make elaborate arrangements for entertaining him both in the night and in the daytime he plans to produce in the night some italian masks in which dancing predominates before the royal presence these masks will be accompanied with pleasant speeches lovely comedies and delightful shows gibson's arrangements for the entertainment of the daytime will be in no way less remarkably his pages dress as the little fairies of the forest will appear in a romantic manner before the king during his walk again his followers will appear before the king in the shape of the satyrs who according to the greek legend have the figure of the half man and the half beast they will graze on the garden of the king merrily and participate with their annual feet in some old fashioned contrudence these quoted lines are important from the viewpoint of the development of the dramatic action it prepares the audience for the forthcoming passionate encounter between the king and gaveston then the lines also throw significant light on the character of the speaker we are informed about his thorough idea of the king's nature and his cleverness his shrewd tactful nature the excerpt is a fine specimen of marlowe's mighty lines and clearly mark the poetic temper of the speaker as well as his creator marlowe's interest in classical legends is here patent